Dr. Persons, I want to start with you. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about statutory authorities within the GAO, um, and there's a conversation happening around um, giving, or, I'm sorry, recommending th that they authorize uh, STAA. Can you talk a little bit about that and why you think that's so important? Yes, thanks, um, uh, Chairwoman Bice. Uh, the, the, the main reason is that the, the SDAA, as it's evolved, it been, it's been established, but the missions and the functions, it, it continues to have added expanded mission space to it, starting with technology assessments in addition to the audits that it does. Uh, it, it has a widening spectrum, uh, and now especially inclusive of the Innovation Lab, which you heard the Comptroller General mentioning there. They're moving things forward, but there's, I think, a need for those resources to be expanded and recognized as special. Um, part of this just is informed by the fact that uh, every year that I was chief scientist there, the Congress had language uh, in the conference report or others, usually about pushing more and more technology assessments, science and technology, et cetera. So it's really about the establishment of the more and the broader spectrum of things. It also gives the team an identity where uh, it could avoid jurisdictional issues. Uh, for example, um, S S STAA does things that are technology focused, sometimes involving IT. We also have an IT and cybersecurity team, as the Comptroller General alluded to, that we want to make sure that it's, 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 STAA would be able to do things that uh, allow the ITC team at GAO to do its work in cybersecurity and an oversight capacity primarily, but then also to be able to do other, other work. So it really is about more and uh, the broader spectrum of work that they need to do. Thank you. Um, Mr. Blackwood, let me um, move to you. You mentioned in your testimony, talk, you talked about a clearinghouse for reports. Can you maybe expound on that a little bit more? Um, I know, you know, we're sort of looking at um, all of the functions across uh, support agencies as a whole and trying to determine is there overlap, is there duplicity, is there, are there ways that we can streamline? So, you know, do, do we need a clearinghouse? Do we need to maybe combine um, agencies? Tell me a little bit more about your thought process on that. Yeah, thank you for the question. I mean, I think there's two ways uh, to look at this. Um, you know, and first I would start with the context of, you know, Congress is one of the most advised bodies in the world or anywhere and receives a lot of information from a lot of different inputs. And you have information coming from the legislative branch um, agencies. You have external experts. And as you go to look for information or recommendations, you would want to be able to do that in a singular place. And that can happen potentially through a dashboard or a way of compiling information. So one way that I would uh, respond to your uh, question is, you know, you could create a dashboard or a platform that puts um, customers first and, and Congress first thinking about what it needs. Um, it could work iteratively and so that it can change over time to think about what those changes might, what those needs might be when it changes. It could look at uh, data quality and what you're actually receiving. Um, and it could focus on really the outcome and not necessarily the process. So it's not the database itself, but it's what's in it and how Congress uses it. Um, the second thing is to look at all the different or potential overlap that the different agencies have. CRS may provide information to individual members, may provide things at a speed to which is necessary in a fast-moving environment, and GAO may provide information that is longer in depth, may be more evidence-based, and has a more rigor and methodological approach to it. And CBO might provide estimates on particular legislation or economic outcomes. Do you think that it would be um, uh, that Congress should take under consideration combining some of these entities and uh, collapsing them? I, I, would, I would certainly recommend um, exploring whether merging agencies or collapsing certain capabilities um, would make sense. And I think um, looking at an external entity like the National Academy of Public Administration to do a study as to what those benefits to Congress might be uh, would certainly be encouraged. Excellent. Um, and at this time, I'm going to throw it over to Mr. Lips. Um, you, your recent article published in The Hill critiques the GAO's implementation of two modernization recommendations. Um, how do you think the GAO could do a better job of implementation in the future? I think the big key would be to fully answer the mandates in the uh, Improving Government for America's Taxpayers Act, and specifically to break out all of those um, open recommendations, um, 5,000 in the case of the appropriations report language requirement, um, around 500 in the case of the um, 
uh, Kilmer Timmons bill and go through them and estimate where the cost savings will be the biggest. Where can Congress get the biggest bang for the buck? Um, they may not be able to provide an estimate, as we heard today, for all of them, but they can provide them for some. Um, from my experience, uh, my former boss, Senator Tom Coburn, um, passed the mandate that uh, established the annual report on duplication. Um, that work, as we've heard, has been uh, resulted in $600 billion in savings over the past 12 years. But it's important to know, uh, according to his former staff, I wasn't working with him at the time, GAO didn't want to do that work um, until they were mandated by law. They were asked to do it, they didn't want to do it, and so uh, he passed an amendment to a debt ceiling bill. And since then, um, Comptroller General uh, Dodaro has called that the reporting requirement, the gift that keeps on giving. So I think they need to be pushed sometimes to, to deliver what Congress wants. Thank you for mentioning uh, the late uh, Dr. Coburn, uh, who I had the pleasure of getting to know uh, briefly before.